is rocking in anticipation of what the West Virginia fans would like to think is an upset in the making. Hello, everybody. I'm Corey McFerrin. Make no doubt about it. There is no secret. The Hurricanes of Miami are the clear-cut favorites. Undefeated. Some of the best talent in the nation on this football club. West Virginia, on the other hand, suffering through the worst start in Don Dalen's seven-year career here, except for his very first season back in 1980. The major topic of everybody here in Morgantown this year, Vinny Testaverde of Miami. Lynn Swan is with us now. And Lynn's a gentleman who knows a thing or two about quarterbacks. What about Vinny? How good is What's your impression of him? He's very good. What I like most about him is his ability to spread the passes around. The Dan Fouts kind of quarterback gets all his receivers happy. They love to be out there. And he's 6'5". You can find him in the crowd anywhere. Now, his number one receiver, Mike uh, Ir Irvin, is a great young man. He's only a sophomore with one touchdown catch. He will be the all-time leader in touchdown receptions for this Miami football team. The other receivers, Charlie Henry, Alonzo Highsmith, are great athletes. They go after the ball very, very fast. They can make the big play. Also, win the game on the short passing attack. Now, what gives them, gives them a great deal of confidence is their defensive unit. Their defensive unit has been overshadowed by the media, but not necessarily overplayed. They are fast. They are big. Jerome Brown, the nose tackle, is very strong, leads his team. He's an Outland Trophy candidate. But when I talked to Jim Johnson, head coach of the Miami team, he first expressed a great deal of pleasure in the defense. Then he expressed some concern over his defensive unit. Well, our defense played uh, really well early in the season. We've got two seniors starting on defense, so it's a young group. Uh, the only thing that bothers me right now is that we have got four starters out to end the ball game. We've got our starting cornerback, our best cover man, Donnie Ellis, out. We've got both uh, the first team and the second uh, string uh, strong safety out. We've got a, a defensive tackle, a three-year starter, Derwin Jones, out. So I'm concerned because we do have injuries on defense. You know, aside from those injuries that Jimmy's talking about, this club really has no weakness at all. They are undefeated. They are number one. Knocked off Oklahoma, of course, two weeks ago to grab that number one position. As for West Virginia, though, their record is two and three. They've lost three consecutive games. And what do you think about West Virginia? Do they have a chance today? What do they have to do to get the job done? Well, they have a chance if they give a Bob Beeman kind of performance and if their attitude is as high as the altitude in Mexico City. <laughs> what they really need on defense is a big game from David Grant, who's a nose tackle, and also from their outside linebacker, Matt Smith. They have to put pressure on Testaverde. They're going to give him some points, but keep away from the big play and don't give him all day to throw the football. We talked to Coach Nealon yesterday and asked him, hey, what do you tell your players when they go up to face the very best football team in the nation? Well, I don't think you have to tell them anything because, number one, we're a pretty good football team, and uh, we've played a lot of big football teams before, and our kids understand how to win, and I don't think I have to say anything. In fact, if I have to say much, we probably have a major problem. Well, I think he's right. It would be a major problem. 63,500 fans on hand, and one gentleman in the stands is Al Trotwig. Al? All right, Corey, thank you very much. You know the Mountaineers are psyched enough. They're playing the number one team in the country, but more than 13 of the players on that team come from Florida. And of those, seven from the Miami Fort Lauderdale area. What do you think they're thinking today, playing against the number one team in the country, a team that they probably rooted for? They probably wish they were back in Miami. Well, they can't do that, but they can have a little piece of Miami. We had these babies blown up yesterday, some liquid sunshine, and we're going to pass them out to the crowd. Take one and pass them down. So while these fans cheering for West Virginia may not get a chance to win, they will be well-nourished today. West Virginia, 2-3, and three, trying to break a three-game losing streak. Miami, 5-0, and oh, and tops in the country. Take a look at the series record over the years. Miami has the advantage. Last time they met, 1983, down at the Orange Bowl in the Hurricanes with Bernie Kosar in command. Beat West Virginia 20-3, and of course, that was the year Miami went on to win the national title. An outstanding season for the Miami Hurricanes. That was the year Howard Schnellenberger. Wonderful job of coaching that ball club. No question about that. There you go, the top ten, Miami. Number one in the land. You might get an argument from your Alabama faithful, maybe Nebraska, maybe Michigan, Penn State, Oklahoma, Auburn, Arkansas, Southern Cal and Iowa. We'll round out the top ten. Perfect day for football, perfect autumn afternoon at Mountaineer Field. Jimmy Johnson, head coach of Miami, he came aboard right after that national championship season, the summer of 1984, came in from Oklahoma State after five seasons there. Coach Don Neelan, 
in his seventh year at West Virginia. He is seven victories away from becoming the all-time winningest head coach in Mountaineer history. An honor right now that goes to Art Happy Lewis. Two contrasting coaches, Don Nealon, kind of a hum homespun person, <laughs> pitching very well here in the West Virginia community. Jim Johnson, very smooth, polished man, comes out in his business suit. That's right. Likes, likes to have a good time with his players. Runs a very relaxed ship in Miami. As you can see, West Virginia will receive. And don't think for a moment that an upset is outside the possibility. Outside the realm of possibility today in 84, for instance, Doug Flutie and Boston College, a highly ranked team at that point, were taken down by West Virginia in an upset. In fact, uh, Doug Flutie never beat West Virginia in four years of competition. Here we go. Mark Seeley kicks it off. Darren Fulton takes it out of his own end zone. Hurdles up to about the 14-yard line. West Virginia on offense. Mike Timko, the quarterback, is a key man. He's had two consecutive subpar performances. In fact, last week in the Virginia Tech game, he was pulled in the second quarter in favor of the backup, Ben Reed. He will start today. And Dwayne Wallace, the offensive coordinator, tells me if Timko can, can get off to a good start, gather some confidence, look out. First and ten, West Virginia from their 13-yard line. Little play action, Timko to the air, and it's caught by Chris Pecan. And a gain of about two yards there. So right away, Timko comes out firing. Now the offensive line for West Virginia, one of the big question marks coming in this year. Very, very young, as you can see, only one senior, one junior in the whole bunch. Offensive coordinator Wallace told me, really, one of the real pleasant surprises so far this year. They've improved every single week. Second and eight. There's Pecan again. He slips and falls down immediately. The defense for Miami, tell you what, 4-3 multiple scheme, 11 points a game is all they're allowing. Look out for two people in particular. Jerome Brown. Outland Trophy candidate. He controls the line of scrimmage. Daniel Stubbs, the left end. This guy simply cannot be blocked. He leads the team in sacks with seven. Third and seven for West Virginia. Their own 15-yard line. There's a handoff to Holopi. He loses a football at about the 20-yard line, and Miami says they've got it. I think the officials, the way they're marking the ball, are going to say that he was down. Not a fumble. Won't be a turnover. And West Virginia will punt it away. You know, it's very important. The officials have to be right on top of these plays. The athletes will be struggling, trying to get the extra yards. They're trying to look to make sure people can't get the extra shots. I saw his knee go down there. Now the ball slips out. But you know what? They called it a fumble. They certainly gave it to Miami. They did call it a fumble. Miami's football. I was going to start by saying if this West Virginia team is going to have a chance, they, gotta, they have to stay away from those mistakes. And the first thing they do is turn the ball over. Look at the field position. 20 yards for Vinny Testaverde to go for a touchdown. Testaverde at quarterback. Highsmith and Broughton, your running backs. And right away they give to Highsmith. And he has stopped cold for a loss by Big Matt Smith, the All-American linebacker. Here it is again. Watch Jerome Brown very closely, Lynn. Now, this is the fumble. Jerome Brown was not expect is not expected to play all day because he's coming back from an injury. You see he jumps in on the top there. The ball comes loose, but I do believe his knee had been down. Problem is, the official wasn't able to see the knee on the ground. Don Nealon must be seething right now, but after that great defensive play by Matt Smith, the second and 12. Testaverde to the air for the first time. He's got pressure, and he is sacked. He is Zach, Matt Smith, and Chris Parker. Matt Smith, the gentleman we spoke about in the pregame, told us yesterday, I'll be coming all day long. And he is playing the kind of game he probably dreamed about, Corey. He's coming in from the outside linebacker position, putting the pressure. He, a good job of blocking him, but the problem is he has the speed to get around the outside. He comes around the block. Testaverde, standing strong in that pocket, didn't sense him there, didn't move. Matt Smith making a mark, getting in his boat for the All-American this year. Loss of 11 yards, third and 23. Testaverde lots of time, lets it rip. 
He's got his man Blades inside the 10, brought down at the six-yard line by Dave Lockwood. And I believe it is good enough for the first down. It is. It is. He needed to get just inside the 10-yard line. We talked about how cool and calm Bennett Testaverde is. We talked about the defense not giving him a lot of time to throw the football. They didn't give him time earlier. But just look at what he accomplishes once you protect him. His receiver, Brian Blades, very fast, runs about a 4-4 in the 40-yard dash, and all day to make that cut and come back to the football. Miami ball on the six-yard line. Number 77, O'Connor, you saw him explode across the right side of the line. He's upset with himself. Paul O'Connor, 6'3", 258 pounds. Dead ball, full start, offense. He's a senior, one of three seniors on the starting offensive line for Miami. So, first and goal from the 11 yard line. Harriman and Irvin are your receivers. Smith and Broughton in the backfield. Testaverde being chased on the run, fires it incomplete. That ball intended for the tight end, Charles Henry. And again, being chased out there by number 97, Jeff Casto, giving Vinny some problems as he rolled out trying to spot his receiver. Now, Miami's offensive backs, Broughton and Highsmith, of course, are your running backs. The two big guys, though, the pass and catch combination. Testaverde and Irvin. Vinny Testaverde, 32 touchdowns in his career at the University of Miami. Irvin, one more touchdown catch. He will break Eddie Brown's all-time Miami record for touchdown receptions. Here's Testaverde. Throws the ball. Henry had it and dropped it at the five-yard line on the third down play. And Miami will have to make the attempt at the field goal. Miami's offensive line. Very strong, of course. These are the fellas responsible for protecting Testaverde. Do a fine job. Rakosi is probably the all-around best offensive line performer. He's a center. All-American, honorable mention All-American last year. He'll be playing somewhere in the NFL next season. Excuse me, it's now third and 11. Third and goal as Vinny Testaverde fires it. Touchdown. That is Irvin, and that is the catch. That sets the record. Miami on the board. The third down play. Vinny Testaverde comes through, and Irvin is now the all-time touchdown reception leader at the University of Miami. And obviously, he is very happy, but more importantly, I think, in this ballgame, Corey, now that he's made the catch, he scored the touchdown, it won't be on his mind anymore. Very often, a receiver or a back has a goal, a record they can break. They're a little tense, and they just want to get out of the way. Look how poised Testaverde is there. And Mike just comes back to the football, shakes his man. He's in the end zone by a good two yards. Mike Irvin, who said last week after the Northern Illinois University victory as the extra point by Cox is good, he said, hey, I don't want to win the thing against Northern Illinois. I want to win the record, set the record on national TV. He just did it. Miami leads early in the first 7-0. <laughs> on, on the right of your screen, now on the center of your screen, number 47, the gentleman who just caught that touchdown pass, Mike Irvin, who now has caught at least one touchdown pass in 15 of the 18 games he's played, just a sophomore, and now has the all-time record, of course, as we said, established by Eddie Brown. He is a poised young man, and I think sometimes people can mistake his uh, gregarious personality for being very cocky, but he's anything but cocky. He, I think he possesses that same kind of inner confidence that Vinny Testaverde has. Seelig with his second kickoff of the afternoon, and Darren Fulton this time will not run the football out. So West Virginia, after a good, strong defensive surge, simply could not hold back Vinny Testaverde and his high-powered aerial attack. Miami on the board at 7-0. 11.31 to go here in the first quarter. careful about making those kind of mistakes and making where they make those mistakes they could have fumbled that football on Miami 
Miami's 20-yard line, it wouldn't have been that bad. But to, <laughs> to turn it over so close to make it so easy, it's death. Tipco, look out. He is tackled and thrown for the big loss. Jerome Brown, the Outland Trophy candidate with the sack. We talked about the injuries. We talked about his injury coming into the game. He had a foot injury sustained in the Oklahoma football game. Now, as we watch him play here, keep in mind, this is a strong football team, and even though they beat Oklahoma convincingly, they were banged up a great deal. When that happens to a football team, you've got to be careful that these other teams don't get that upset fever and really come after you when you're weak. Second and 21 after the Browns sack. Timko scrambling. Celio chasing him out of bounds. So Timko unable to spot a receiver. Rod Carter over there along with Celio. And Vinny Testaverde. Already with a touchdown. He's, he's had a couple of good games the past two weeks. He's particularly proud of his passing completion uh, percentage, 75% against Northern Illinois and, of course, against Oklahoma the week before. Well, you have to you have to watch great talent when they come off a big game. Sometimes they do have that low. He didn't have it against Northern Illinois and certainly doesn't want to have it here. Third down and 20. Timko Brown again brings him down inside the two-yard line. Jerome Brown, his second sack of the series. Wow. They're going to give Jerome Brown a chance to really play as much as his foot will hold up. Nice swim move there. He just, he's a big man. You don't really associate that kind of speed with people his size. If you get down here in the trenches, he gives you a little outside move, throws an arm up, and he's by Lance Carrion. And not a good kick back at about the 35-yard line. Brought down, that's number 11, David Kintai. And Miami, once again, will have great field position. 33-yard punt. Miami's football, they're in good shape. They lead by seven early in the first. Back at Mountaineer Field, Don Nealon and Jimmy Johnson. First time they've ever matched wits on a football field. It's also the first time the number one team has ever visited Morgantown. There's the pitch to Broughton. Good block, 30-25. Look at him go. He's still moving. He's going to score a touchdown. Melvin Broughton. Thirty-three yards. Melvin Broughton. And we are seeing one explosive football team. As a matter of fact, Miami's outscored their opponents this year. 56-0 in the first. A similar quick start this afternoon. He gets excellent blocking up front. But when he breaks through the line, he's looking for a place to run. He runs through a crowd of Mountaineers. People have all kinds of shots at him. They just don't make the good tackle. All too often, the young kids get out there, and they don't get their bodies in front of the people carrying the football. Extra point from Cox is good, and it's 14-0 on Melvin Broughton's seventh rushing touchdown this year. He is the top rusher on this football club at 237 yards on the year. Here we go again. You get a fine look at the good blocking. He gets up front. He finds the hole. And the rest is just his own ability to look for daylight, keep the legs pumping, and run into the end zone. Just a solid, fundamentally sound football player. Hurricanes wasting little time. Time in Morgantown. Jim Lampley in New York. Let's finalize matters with regard to Penn State. When the Nittany Lions got the ball back, trailing 17-14 with six minutes left, they used their backup offensive backfield. The running backs were Blair Thomas and David Clark, and they came through. Thomas accounted for 64 yards in the drive. Clark ran the ball in. Later, Penn State blocked a punt for insurance, and they wound up staying unbeaten at 23-17. Penn State next has Syracuse, Alabama, West Virginia, Maryland, Notre Dame, and Pitt. Now let's go back to Morgantown. All right, thanks, Jim. With 10 minutes to go here in the first quarter, the Hurricanes have already stormed to a two-touchdown lead. The latter touchdown coming on behalf of Mr. Melvin Broughton, 33 yards for the score. Mark Selig will kick off for the third time this quarter. And the homecoming crowd here in Morgantown, very quiet. 
Once again, Darren Fulton will not run it out. Let's check in with Al Troutwig. Al? Corey, the man with me perhaps has more Miami Hurricane football memories than anyone else. Walt Koshevsky played on the Miami Hurricanes team in 1936 and then some a little bit more than with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're so close to Pittsburgh and you're so close to Miami. What was your city like back then when you played? Well, it was small. We didn't have a million people in the whole state. Our, where we played our games, the Orange Bowl, was a wooden stadium and it seated 17,000 people. And I bet over the years, Walt, you probably don't have that big physical punch you used to have, huh? Don't you worry about that. I can kill oh. him. <laughs> <laughs> get up, Al. Get up. Is Al with us? I lost four yards on the play. <laughs> <laughs> Can we give him a penalty for roughing or roughness? Or no, it was a clean shot. Yeah. Al just didn't protect himself. Two minutes in the box. They're going to re-kick it here. Mark Seelig will try it again. There was an offside penalty, which West Virginia is going to take on this kickoff. Rightfully so. If it, You hope he slips a little bit on this kick because West Virginia wants to get better field position. Well, West Virginia so far has had the ball twice each time. Three plays. One time the fumble, which was a controversial call, debatable call, went over to Miami. Test have already converted with the touchdown. The second time they punted it away. The third time they'd like to get some offense rolling. And those stats that you saw there on the screen indicate perfectly uh, the kind of game that West Virginia is up against, the talent they're up against, and, and their own problems that they've had throughout the year giving up points in the Miami defense and just holding people down. Sealing again, this time from the 30-yard line. Fulton. Fumble. And it's fumble, and who's got it? Miami says they do, and the preliminary signal is that they do. The Hurricanes have recovered on the 22-yard line. Getting up from the pile is J.C. Penny, number 21. Another mistake by West Virginia. Their second fumble of the game. Second time Miami's come up with it. Here we go. Whenever you look at football games and you try and analyze why people win, why people lose, you always look to mistakes. You look to turnovers, and they're there. It, it's just, it is just so deathly. And this is a young ball club, and I'm sure they're excited about this game. There's a hit that caused a fumble right there. Uh, right there, number ball just pops loose. You know this West Virginia team is excited, and they're a little nervous. They've got to get it under control. And they certainly can't afford to make mistakes against a team like this. Robert Pickett almost brought Vinny Testaverde down. Now he connects with Urban, does not connect. Urban was there, had beaten his man, hit his hands, and fell through. That's the dirty and Urban just about had their second touchdown connection of the day. Benny Curitan was covering. That catch, if he had made it, would have been another of a long, long list of plays to be in his personal highlight book. Not easy to make that catch. Coming over the shoulder, running down the sideline. He has to keep his body un under control. If he veers to the right, he's out of bounds. It'll be second and 10. Ball on the 22-yard line. Brought inside handoff. Gets away. Inside the 10, he fumbles the ball, and Miami recovers in the end zone. Touchdown, Hurricanes. Alfredo Roberts, number 87, the backup tight end, saw the football, dove in the end zone, came up with it. And Miami has a three-touchdown lead with 9.39 to go here in the first. There's also a man down on the football field. Brought number five, the man carried the ball on that play who fumbled it. I don't know how he's hurt. Ooh, he's obviously in a great deal of pain. There's a tight end that recovered the fumble. I'm telling you, as, as you look at this play, it's, you know, they call them the Hurricanes. And right now, this football team is playing in the center of it where everything is calm. And Virginia seems to be on the outside, not getting a break, just getting torn up completely. Even when Miami makes a mistake, there's a player who's hustling, trying to make the big play. He recovers in the end zone for a touchdown. Give Broughton 15 yards on the carry. There's the man who recovered it. And Broughton very slowly being helped off the field. He is obviously in some pain. The junior from Miami had a 
fine year. Opened it up against South Carolina with a 100-yard game. Three touchdowns. He has seven all together today. And probably would have had eight had he held on to the ball there at about Certainly. the five-yard line. Just a little push, a little leg drive. He would have been there. Certainly hope it's nothing serious. Greg Cox is in to attempt the extra point. David Kintai is holding. It's up and good. And Miami has a 21-0 lead. And they certainly have gotten a break or two today. A fumble at about the five-yard line by this man, Melvin Rott, a few moments ago. And, of course, earlier, when Hollifield for West Virginia lost the football, appeared as if he was down. Didn't go that way. Ball was loose. Miami recovered at about the 22-yard line. Don't forget the American League Baseball Championship Series. Angels and Red Sox, that's tonight. On ABC beginning at 8 o'clock. Of course, Boston trailing 2-1 after that game last night. Game 5 would be tomorrow afternoon in the afternoon with uh, Astros and the Mets in the evening. Of course, the, the Mets won that thriller. Wow, we saw the end of that one. That Ex was exciting baseball game. Shea Stadium. It's the, the kind of thing that you, you dream about doing. You put yourself in a position for that. Uh, there you get Dykstra up, and Dykstra not known for being a big home run hitter. Gets down there, a man on second base. In the seats. Lenny Dykstra. Not the home run kind of threat. That's Broughton's ankle. Hey! Working on it, we aren't going to speculate as to just what kind of injury it is, but we do hope that it's nothing serious. It's talk about Selig again. Pounds it with up the one. Fulton says, let's give it a try. 20-yard line across the 25, 30, still on his feet. Finally brought down at the 33. Selig is there to help with the tackle. And that gets the Mountaineer fans up out of their seats here at Mountaineer Field. They need a little, a little pump here, a little enthusiasm going. They need a lot of pump. <laughs> they, need, they need a big play. They need a big play to get them on the, on the scoreboard, to get their attitude set in a positive direction. This is not a football team you want to be behind and, and have your head between your legs and get down on yourself. Just put it behind you and look for something good. So the Mountaineers will try it again from the 33-yard line. That's Basil in motion. Hand off to Andra Johnson. He makes it across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Dan Celio is there. The big left tackle to make the stop for Miami. Tim Coe, a junior, closed out the 85 campaign very strong. Led West Virginia to three straight victories. Got off to a good start this year with two straight wins. But then West Virginia lost three consecutive times. Here's Tim Coe scrambling, throwing on the run. Is it caught? No. At about the 45-yard line of Miami, John Talley is there. It was very close, incomplete pass. It was very difficult to see. We're looking down from our booth on top of these players. And when the receiver goes down low for that kind of pass, it's tough for us to see. Boy, it's real tough for the officials to see unless they're right on top of it. You see the ball coming in there. You see the shallows. It, I can't tell you whether he made that catch or not. A good receiver gets his hand underneath it, Corey, whether he catches it or not, and tries <laughs> to roll over with the ball on top of his chest and his hands to make it look like a catch. One of your tricks of the trade, huh? Third and have seven. That's Tally, and he struggles. In fact, he doesn't make it back to the line of scrimmage. Big Dan Stubbs takes him down for a loss. No first down yet in this ball game for West Virginia. John Talley, he's a big player for him, number seven. His brother, Darryl Talley, played here at West Virginia. Second round draft choice for the Buffalo Bills. Of course, Talley was a quarterback last year, converted him to flanking. Had a tough time accepting that, but at this point, seems to be enjoying it. Brett Perriman back to receive on the punt. Slips through a couple of guys at the 40-yard line, driven out of bounds at about the 42. There are flags on the field. was a 40-yard kick by Carrion. The call you would expect. Flippy against Miami. 
So for the first time today, Miami will get the football in not necessarily great field position. We'll just see how consistent they can be with a long drive as they lead this game with 8-17 in the first period. Griffin, you're in the run. Back in Mount Deer Field, Corey McFerrin, Lynn Swan, and Al Troutwig. As you see, the Hurricanes in firm command with 8 minutes and 17 seconds to go in the first quarter. Vinny Testaverde at the controls for the 19-yard line. He hands it off to Warren Williams. And he bangs his way across the right side up to about the 28-yard line. Travis Curtis makes a stop there for West Virginia. Of course, Williams, the backup to Melvin Bratton. He uh, suffered a knee injury against Notre Dame in 1984 as a uh, freshman. He's healed from that, a solid one. Not the explosive kind of one that Bratton is, but a player that won't hurt him. Second and one. And off Williams, still on his feet, breaks through the front line, brought down at about the 42-yard line. First down, Miami. They're doing it on the ground. Corey, I think Williams heard what I said. He's not to prove me wrong. <laughs> that was a fine run. Fine I think, run. I think you're right. You know, we talk about Vinny Testaverde and obviously the clear-cut favorite in the Heisman Trophy race. We talked to uh, Jimmy Johnson and yesterday, and he told us a little bit about why Vinny Testaverde is so special to him. And we'll hear from Jimmy in just a moment. First down, Miami. That's Alonzo Highsmith. Good stop by West Virginia's David Grant. Jimmy Johnson was talking to us yesterday about Benny Testaverde. Here he is. Benny is he's a complete football player. A lot of individuals can go on the field and they can uh, contribute to a team's success by their natural ability, running, catching the ball, etc. But Vinny not only uses his physical talent, but he uses his mental talent. He is able to go ahead and call plays. He's able to audible. He's able to put us in the right formations and, and call the plays. Uh, and then he's able to execute the plays with his physical ability. And so, you know, he's a complete football player. That he is, as he completes another pass to Alfredo Roberts, gentleman who recovered the rotten fumble for the touchdown. It's great to be an offensive player, a receiver, and be in the ball game where you haven't caught a pass, but you've got a touchdown to your credit. That's right. A few of the scores around the country. The Sooners knocked off, of course, two weeks ago by the Hurricanes out in front of Texas. Number four, Michigan leading. Third and two for Miami. Highsmith. And he is hit hard on the right side. In fact, with the football for West Virginia. Is and David they Grant. Are they giving it to him? Yes. Yes. So big David Grant. The middle guard out of Belleville, New Jersey, comes up with West Virginia's first big defensive play. Makes a stop on Highsmith and steals the ball. David Grant, they say he's a real solid ball player, but he has to come to play. Sometimes he isn't quite ready to play. Now, you see the ball in the crowd, the runner in the crowd. He's going down. Where is the football? Number 98 coming up. We'll take a closer look at him. He's a big ball player, 6'4", 280 pounds, only a junior. Good technique there, keeping his outside arm free, allowing him to get in to strip the ball away from the carrier. Back to live action, Timko firing it is over the head of Chris Peacock. And the fans here at Mountaineer Field, obviously not pleased with Timko's performance. When we talked, you talked about upsets early in the ball game. Right. I almost thought today was going to be one of those upset Saturday afternoons in college football. Right. With Penn State being behind Cincinnati late in the fourth quarter, they came back and they won it. And you keep that in mind because this Miami football team has to play Cincinnati also. Second and ten. Gain of two or three for Undra Johnson. George Myra. Junior, the leading tackler in Miami's defense, makes the stop. George Myra Jr. might be a familiar ring, and of course, there's a good reason. Papa played a little ball here in Miami. Great quarterback here in Miami, played in the National Football League, and of course, you know, we didn't say it, but it was George Myra that came up with that fumble recovery uh, early in the first period, the first fumble. Timko going for tally, not even close. About the 30-yard line. 
Daryl Fullington supplies coverage for Miami. So West Virginia got the big break on the fine defensive play by Grant in Miami territory. Tim Coe and the Mountaineer offense cannot take advantage. Tim Coe so far, one for four through the air, a grand total of two yards. So carry on. The punt. Very short punt. It's going to take a Miami bounce at about the 27 yard line. So carry on, who's came in averaging 41 plus a game, gets off a 17 yard kick in the Hurricanes offense back on the field. And now, don't forget, college football next week. We're talking a little Southeastern Conference action, Bama and Tennessee, or we're going to give you Baylor, 13th ranked in the country against Texas A&M, 14th ranked, or possibly Arkansas and Texas. The Alabama-Tennessee game is definite. The other game will be one of the other two Southwest Conference matchups. And off 37 is Darrell Oliver. Look at him go up to the 47-yard line. Oliver, the backup fullback to Alonzo Heisman. Obviously, Miami keeping the ball on the ground, trying to make sure that they don't make mistakes. I think they're feeling very confident. They've got this game well in hand. Look at the offensive line. They have just blown that defensive unit back five yards. So Darryl Oliver was going to pick up at least that before he came into an area of contact with any of the defensive players. 17-yard gain for Oliver, his longest of the season. First down, Miami. Testaverde fires it. Far side to Blade. He's brought down at the 44 of West Virginia. Dave Lockwood is there to make the stop. Brian Blades, whose brother Benny Blades, is a big star in the secondary for Miami. Brian and Benny, two of the fastest players on this football team. Uh, as Brian runs a 9-5 in the 100-yard dash, ran that in high school. Uh, his brother Benny in that secondary Boy, does he have speed? Oof. He was invited to the Olympic trials for the 400 meters. This boy runs. In fact, when they came into the game, Brian had only five receptions, Benny five interceptions. <laughs> yeah. Brian was a little upset. He hadn't gotten the ball a little more to outdo his brother. He was picking him off in the secondary. Testa Verde. Looking, lots of time, rips it, and it's almost intercepted. That is uh, Curtis there, number five. The outstanding free safety for West Virginia. He can't believe it. He says, I should have had that ball. Well, he should have. That was an opportunity that West Virginia doesn't fail to capitalize on. I said a big play. This interception, had it been it had it been an interception, might have been the big play to really turn this West Virginia team around given them the field position that they have lacked so far in this ballgame. Travis Curtis, perhaps the number one player in West Virginia's secondary. Second and ten for Miami. Has to really a long drop. Scoots it out, a dangerous shovel pass, I believe, to Warren Williams, and he has smothered the ball loose. The Mountaineers say they've got it. Eric Lester's in there, and I think it's going to go to the Mountaineers. No. Third but a down. big loss on the play. He dropped back 14 yards, and that is where they marked the loss, 14-yard loss. It looked to me like he was trying to set up a screen. I don't know if he was trying to set up a screen or whether he was just really trying to go deep. And we'll take a look from our camera. You look at the linemen. They're not really shifting to the outside. They're not running out there to set up blocks. Williams is there just as a safety valve, I believe. And he was trying to go deep for the big play. Third and 22. Look for Testaverde to maybe try it again here going deep. He's going to have to to get the first. Walks it out. Irvin cannot make the play at about the 40-yard line. Stacy Smith is there to pop him. I should say that's Larry Holly there to pop him as the ball came in. So Testaverde and Irvin unable to connect. And who's on the field? Number 75, John O'Neill, offensive tackle. Flat on his back. Speaking of injuries, let's go down and uh, check in with Al Trotwick and see how Melvin Broughton is coming along. Al? 
when Corey Melvin came off the field and at the bench, the team doctor checked as best he could for ligament damage and so forth. They actually retaped with some stronger tape his ankle that was injured, applied some ice, and they're preparing to look at it more closely in halftime to see if there's any swelling or other, any other further problems. I expect you could see Melvin Bratton back in this game. He is now being taken off the field, as you're seeing, <laughs> heading towards the locker room. Maybe we won't see him. I'm not sure, but that's the word I had a few minutes ago. Back to you. All right, Al. At least we can tell he's not in a whole lot of pain, blowing kisses to the fans as he leaves the field. One of the things, in spite of being so talented and so strong as this Miami football team is, that you have to be concerned about when you're trying for a championship, when you're going through a long season, are the injuries. Now, as strong as they are, a couple of injuries like this to your starting personnel, things that will linger on throughout the season, and all of a sudden, the armor gets a bit weaker. People start saying, well, you don't have your best secondary in there. I'm going to go up top and challenge them. You lose your offensive linemen. They start pressing there. And suddenly, the timing isn't the same as it would have been with that unit that stayed together from the beginning of the season. Well, Jimmy Johnson uh, talked to us about it yesterday, how he was concerned about uh, the defense in particular with two starters out in secondary, four others hurting, Jerome Brown, as we've mentioned, with that toe injury, and most of those injuries really as the result of the Oklahoma game two weeks ago with that wishbone offense. The secondary, of course, comes up to supply run support, and consequently, a lot of their fellas got banged up a little bit. Watch 75 O'Neal. He's blocking Matt Smith, the young man who turned in a couple of great plays earlier in the first quarter. All-American candidate linebacker. He just gets pushed down on his back and then a pile. And they rolled over on top. And it may be that left leg that seemed to have gotten trapped underneath as you see him going down once again. Immediately, they have that splint. So Miami will punt for the first time today with 3.37 to go in the first. Jeff Beagles, Beagles, the junior from Scottsdale, Arizona, gets it off. There are penalty flags all over the place. I was looking at the 25-second clock. It had 22 seconds on it. Penalty against Miami. That'll drop Fiegel's back a little further. Checking the knee there. O'Neal, 75. Over here, I'm saying he feels some movement. Right. Talking about the movement in that knee joint with the ligaments there. If there's too much play, obviously a ligament is loose or possibly torn or stretched. Everybody's knee has a certain amount of play there. So Miami penalized for the fourth time today. Beagle's back at about the 23-yard line, his own 23-yard line. Big rush. Beagle's goes down. A penalty flag is thrown. Roughing the punter, no question about it. Number 21, Benny Curitan. It's a man that came in. Coaches try and teach their kids. Look for a point in front of the kicker where the ball is going to pass. Aim for that point and hit the ball. That time he goes in front, but the punter's momentum carried him forward. He hits the leg, and as soon as you do it, it's a penalty. Offense will get the ball back. Again, West Virginia trying to come up with a big play there. Going for the block punt. Curitan comes through, knocks Fiegel's down. So Miami back on offense as they step off the penalty. Let's listen in. Roughing the kicker. Defense. Automatic first down. One of the costliest penalties in football. Let's check in with Al Trotwig and see what's going on with uh, John O'Neill. Al? All right, Corey, the Miami team doctor has just uh, played with the knee of John O'Neill, asked him if he heard anything move or pop when he was hit. John said he felt something move in there. So with a lot of concern and uh, with some compassion, the doctor said, John, you're going to sit out the rest of this game. You've got a sprained knee, and we'll check it out at halftime a little bit more. Testaverde from the West Virginia 48 fires it up to Charles Henry. Gain of about four yards on the play, maybe five. 
Travis Curtis is there for West Virginia. I have to believe that Coach Johnson is not going to have O'Neill, nor will he have uh, Broughton come back into this ball game. Rather than get them re-injured or take a chance that they will further damage themselves, and he's got a longer season to play them. Second for Williams. Keeps those legs churning for the first down. Miami ball at the 31-yard line. Coming into the ball game, Williams had 147 yards, 27 attempts. See the score, Texas Tech 7, Arkansas 7. I believe we had an incorrect... Uh, score up there a moment ago incorrect matchup incorrect matchup we apologize that is the correct score and the correct teams Lester Verde throws long intended for Irvin Lockwood bumps into Irvin pretty pretty heavily there and the crowd reacted well, that's what you have to do you want to hit these guys and I'm surprised so far in the ball game that Michael Irvin has dropped passes Dropped the pass, a couple of passes I thought he really should have caught. Then he goes up there, and number 41 comes in, makes him pay the price. That's up a second and 10 for Miami as the Hurricanes. Already with a 21-point lead. It's 21-0, 2.28 to go in the first quarter. Fires complete. Williams, 25-yard line. He's still moving. Finally brought down inside the 20. Curtis is there, along with Benny Curran. Good, aggressive run after the catch. You see Blades down there, writhing in pain. The backs will catch a lot of the passes coming out of the backfield. Alonzo Highsmith is a leading back, also the second leading receiver on the football team, having caught 11. Bratton has caught 10 passes. Oliver, six. So we can expect to see Williams and company continue to uh, catch passes throughout this afternoon. Williams came into the ballgame with, with only three catches for 18 yards. That's Brian Blades. Young man we talked about earlier with all that speed, all that talent. He, in fact, had a 56-yard touchdown reception last week against Northern Illinois. I wonder if we're taking... Brian Blades runs 9-5 in the 100-yard dash. He's just standing there now. Nothing, doesn't seem to be anything right there. I guess the pile rolls back on him. It's a kind of an innocent victim. It, even at that or point, could maybe be right the, there, right there. The last guy came right over. Right there. The last guy's going down for the tackle on that pileup. So Blades goes off. You can't protect yourself against that kind of injury. You can hustle, no. you can you can play aggressively, you can be in great shape, uh, but once you're lying down on the ground like that, there's no telling who's gonna fall in. Perriman replaces Blades. We give there to Alonzo Heisman. He coughed up the football. Or did he hit the ground first before the ball came in? Travis Curtis grabbed it for West Virginia. But it is Miami's football. Obviously, they're saying he's down. Didn't have the fumble, and the fans showed their reaction. Boeing probably think, thinking that going back to earlier this quarter, it shouldn't have been a fumble against West Virginia. Brown probably caused it, and the ground did cause it, and the ground causes a fumble. It's not a fumble. Second and six. Castaverde wafting it to the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. Michael Irvin is second grab of the afternoon. So Testaverde and Irvin combined again. Irvin wide open in the end zone. This team is so good against this West Virginia team, Corey, that all they have to do is execute. If they cut out the mistakes, execute, do the things that they have to do, they can't be stopped by West Virginia. Testaverde. 8 of 14 for 80 yards and two touchdowns. Extra point is good. We've got ourselves a 28-0 ball game. 
It's homecoming, Mountaineer Field. Not much has come home about <laughs> so far. This well, I think I think homecoming '86. We remember it as the day Vinny came to town. Watch Irvin here. Springs by Lockwood. Garrett Brown, the fine receiver who played here, held the touchdown reception mark at 14. He was tied with him coming into the ball game. That one, along with the earlier catch, gives him 16. And he's smooth, calm, just runs down the field. Vinny Testaverde, nothing seems to shake him. Nothing has happened to really put any pressure on him from the field. Nervous. Look at those eyes. Open, he's not blinking. He's calm, he's sure about what's going on. Let me lean over to the right, get a better angle. My boy has it for a touchdown. You know, the first thing that strikes you when you have a chance to, to meet Vinny Testaverde in person up close is just how big he is. He is a monster. If you just know him by recognizing his face, you think, hey, he must be the tight end. He's a big kid, a very strong kid. In fact, the bench press is, what, 325 pounds, which uh, they say is, is generally what an offensive lineman might uh, try to attain. And with that kind of height, when he scrambles around and the receivers are looking for him, they pick him out in a second. Coming back to the football, and it's so important as a receiver who could be anywhere from 5 to 10 yards downfield to 40 or 50 yards downfield when he starts to scramble to be able to pick him up come back to him and make the play so he can get rid of that football. A 12-play, 72-yard drive for Miami. Soaked up a little less than four minutes of the clock. Selig again. Darren Fulton. Oh. And I think they're going to have to give it to him at about the one-foot line. And that is the case. Darren Fulton made an unwise decision. A lot they of mental mistakes by West Virginia. Watch this thing. Why did he take the ball? Oh, he's back on the end zone. He should know where he is. He should sense where he is. He should have just let this ball go. If he lets it go, the official might have said it was out before it crossed the end zone. They back him up five yards, kick it over again. But no, he comes over and makes a kick. It's a mental breakdown. It and is a loss of concentration, and you can't win a football game. You can't be in a football game with those kind of mistakes, and that's all they've done so far this afternoon. Could be a safety very, very close. Timko taken down hard. He makes it back to almost the one-yard line. We're almost to the end of the first quarter, and the Mountaineers are still searching for their first first down of the afternoon. Vic Morris was the man to stack up Timko at the line of scrimmage. So it's second and ten for the Mountaineers. Less than a minute to go here in the first. Handoff, Holloway. He breaks through to about the four-yard line. You know, John, I call him Holloway, excuse me, John Hollifield at about the four-yard line. As you take a look at first half possessions, <laughs> look at the start. You know, right yeah. And then they fumbled the kickoff. Now look at look at Miami. You know, West Virginia, uh, they start the ball, West Virginia, on, the, on West Virginia's 19, 33, 22, uh, then their own 19 and 28. On the third and eight, it's Hollifield again. He gets nothing. Maybe a yard. Colbert Bain, the right cornerback in there as the first quarter. Comes to a close here at Mountaineer Field. Miami has still not given up a point in the first quarter this year. It's 28 zip in Morgantown. Well, the Mountaineer cheerleaders still managing to smile and try to get up a little enthusiasm. One of the fans here at homecoming 86, Lance Carrion into punt as we begin the second quarter out of his own end zone. Kind of a line drive kick. That is Perriman circling at about the 45-yard line of West Virginia. He is tripped up. There is a penalty thrown as Perriman goes out at about the 35, 36-yard line. Let's take a look and see what it is. Perriman and Blades were sharing time at the split-in position, so if there's a clip. Call Back it against second, Miami. Uh, second clip of the day against Miami. So if... Blades is not going to come back in this ball game, then Perryman will probably take probably the lion's share and take up the slack. And we may see several people beyond Perryman before <laughs> we're done. <laughs> this certainly seems to be the kind of football team where Jimmy Johnson can get a lot of his backup people in and get them some experience. 
flipping during the return. First down. All right, the clipping call, and Miami will work out of its own 44-yard line. Perriman and Percy Wilson are your receivers. Vinny going up. That is Perriman. Complete pass at about the 40-yard line. Let's check in now with Al Trotwig. Corey, I'm with the Mountaineer, Matt Zerbus. Matt, uh, how did West Virginia come to be known as the Mountaineers? Well, um, Al, West Virginia used to be the frontier north of, uh, I mean, west of Virginia was the mountains. We became the Mountaineers. Daniel Boone and uh, Wetzel were famed, two famous West Virginians. Fire your team up for us. Go ahead. We're going to fire this team up, Al. That's up to you, buddy. Let's go, man. Oh. Taking, Al's having a rough day. Alonzo Highsmith spins off a one tackler, still on his feet. We got him fired up. <laughs> yeah, I like that. We, he got him fired up, and Al almost lost an ear. <laughs> well, we got the gun going off, and Al's here. We've got the uh, the old timer giving him a shot to the chest a little earlier. Now lives dangerously sometimes. 14 minutes and 14 seconds to go here in the first half. It's 28 0 Miami. From the 38 yard line. Testaverde and company. Go to work again. Quick pass to High Smith, and he almost eludes the tackler. Darnell Warren at about the 30-yard line. The thing about Highsmith that makes him so valuable is the fact that not only is he a great rusher, but he's the second uh, Vinny's number two target, really, with 11 catches coming in today. Miami runs very much a pro offensive set, and as we look at today's professional football teams, the backs have to catch the ball more and be much more versatile. He certainly, certainly is showing those skills here in Miami. Here in West Virginia from Miami. Exactly. Third and two. Highsmith not going to get it there. Uh -uh. Darnell Warren came in hard with help from Travis Curtis. And Pat Marlin. All right, check out the top ten around the country. Of course, I'm very happy for my alma mater, USC. 0-0, ranked number nine. They were unranked at the start of the season. They've play, been playing extremely well. Come on, we see. Auburn, another big day. Fourth and two, and Miami will go for it. Highsmith got it, and then some. Barreling close to the 20-yard line where Travis Curtis finally makes the stop. There is John O'Neill taking off. We've had three Miami players make an exit today, two of them via the wheeled cart. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that Jimmy Johnson keeps this ball more on the ground, even though he's got a passing party from Miami here, to keep that clock rolling, get his team home if he feels he can hold down, hold on to that lead through the run. Smith. Eric Lester there made the initial hit. Inside the 20-yard line. High Smith will get a get a real good workout here this afternoon if Jimmy Johnson does intend to keep him warm on the ground. Blades was also on that cart rolling out, one of his top receivers. High Smith for his career. Right around 1,600 yards, number four on the all-time Miami list. Testaverde hits Perriman at about the 12, and there's a penalty flag down. Another throw on the far side of the field, just about the 14-yard line. Defensive holding, pushing off by the offensive receiver. Now the receivers never push off. No, never. <laughs> holding on the defense. You got it. Now those defensive backs, they do it all the time. You can't trust them. You can't turn your back on them. Never. Unless you're running away from them. As you did a few times. Scared out of my life. Don Nealon on Vinny Testaverde. Don says, in my 29 years of coaching, I've never seen a quarterback any better. Vinny Testaverde. He says, when you're 6'5", you got a gun, you got feet like this kid's got feet. He says, you're something special. He says, Vinny, he's good as they come. So Holding, defense, first down. 
someone asked Vinny Testaverde after having seen him standing flat with it, throw a pass for about 70 yards. Asked him how far he can really throw it. He says, I don't know. It depends on how far the receiver runs. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I can throw it as far as they run. So Vinny comes to the sideline to talk to Jimmy Miami. Johnson. The game in hand. It's 28 zip. We're in the second. Well, an Army team which ranked 102nd in the country in total defense coming into today scored 18 points in the fourth quarter, including a blocked punt touchdown with 35 seconds to go to upset Tennessee at Knoxville 25-21. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech has handed North Carolina State coach Dick Sheridan his first loss as Wolfpack head man, 59-21. Jerry Mays, 14 carries, 188 yards, three touchdowns, and he also threw for one. Let's go back to Morgantown. All right, Jim Lampley. You see Vinny Testaverde with two more touchdown passes today. Now within four of Bernie Kozar, the all-time Miami record as Warren Williams pulls his way in for the touchdown. Number 24, Warren Williams from Fort Myers, Florida. And that's it in. That's his first touchdown of the season. Came into this ball game with a net of 145 yards. With the injury to Bratton, he comes in takes over the halfback running chores. Again, look at the big hole that the offensive line provides, and then when he gets downfield, he takes on one tackler and carries him into the end zone. Williams, a real hard-nosed, aggressive, north-south kind of runner. Nine-yard touchdown, Scamper. Williams now with 37 yards on the day. He's saying, hi, everybody. We got a number one ranked team in Miami. We're showing everybody just how good we are. Virginia fans. They played their final game at the old stadium back in 79. In fact, they lost a pit in that game. 24 to 17. Right now, you got the Canes up. 35 nothing. Ty Malin is wondering just what he got he has to do here to get anything going against the number one team in the nation. His team has made several mistakes as Perriman bring back, brings back the kick. Or I should say, not Perriman, but Roman Nelson for West Virginia. And, Lynn, I think that's a good question here. Are we seeing just how good Miami is or how poorly West Virginia is playing? Well, we're seeing both. And when you have a team as good as Miami is and you make those kind of mistakes, the fumbles, the bad plays by West Virginia, they capitalize on top of it. They haven't been pressed, and they have 35 points on the scoreboard. Tim goes to your quarterback, John Hollifield, breaks open left side across the 40 to 42 yard line. And that's the biggest gainer of the day. And a first down for West Virginia. And the fans here are on their feet. Something to cheer about. The first first down of the game for the Mountaineers, a gain of 13 for Hollifield. Hollifield, a big day last week against Virginia Tech with 162 yards on the ground. To the Mountaineers at the 41 yard line. First down, Tipco. Rolling look out. He is dumped, and that is big Dan Stubbs, the sack leader for this Miami club. And for Stubbs, that is sack number eight. He led the team last year with 12. As Jimmy Johnson says, nobody has blocked this guy at all this year. When Third you're, sack of the day for Miami. When you're a quarterback running around, scrambling, looking for someone to throw the football, you have to have a... A, a, a second sense as to where the pressure is, where they're coming from, a set of eyes in the back of your head to see them. Hollifield again, this time I think he just lost his feet. He fell down about the 35-yard line. Slipped in the shade. The field, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the field certainly isn't wet. So the Mountaineer fans said, hey, Here. West Virginia started out with two consecutive victories this year over Northern Illinois and East Carolina. Since
since then they've lost three consecutive games. Third and 16. Dimko, he's got his man across the 50, and that is Calvin Phillips, the back backup split in, and Basil Proctor makes the hit. So, the second first down of the day, the first V of the air, Timko fires it up. Phillips coming in with a good catch over the middle. He's going to get hit. Miami playing man-to-man -man coverage. Nobody else back there. Just one single person, but Calvin Phillips comes over, makes a big play. Another first down. Finally, West Virginia crosses midfield. Timko threw for 234 yards against East Carolina earlier in the year. That is Peacock up at the 45-yard line. Dan Celio credited with the stop. And then Simco, as the coaches told us, is not the fastest guy in the world. They realize that. But a good leader, a guy who's worked very, very hard. He is just not the most talented guy in the world playing a very tough position. That's what it boils down to. He's trying to make the best of his talent. He needs a lot of help from the rest of his team. He needs some help right now but he takes things into his own hands and runs out at the 37-yard line. Good move by Timko. I think he might have got the first down. Good heads-up play from Timko. Talked about the team helping him and needing their support. On this particular play, he helps himself as the defensive lineman rushed past him, trying to put the pressure on him. And then he helps himself again by stepping out of bounds and not taking the hit, which might cause him a little pain. That is the third first down of the game and of this drive. First and ten from the 36. Barton, number 63, the guard, John Barton, was in a three-point stand, set for the play, then put his left hand down on the mat. Once they're set, they can't move. They'll back him up five yards. Incidentally, if you're wondering if Miami's front-line defenders are still in the game, the answer is yes. Ball, ball start, offense, okay. Your Stubbs and Browns and Myras, all still in there. First and now 15 for West Virginia. Dimko firing it. It is caught. Grant has fell at the 31-yard line. Grant has fell. Makes the catch his first of the day. Grant has fell the fastest receiver on this West Virginia club. Now, Corey, I am not going to sit here and say that this West Virginia team is going to be able to come from behind, score 35 points, and win. It's, po it's possible. With 825 only in the second quarter, it's possible. What they're doing right now is just settling down, playing their game, taking what the Miami defense is giving them. Timko going up, trying for the touchdown. He's got it. Harvey Smith, touchdown, West Virginia. Gets a very nice angle on the defensive safety. Harvey Smith comes up with the touchdown. The extra point is at it. They've got their seven points on the scoreboard. So Harvey Smith, West Virginia's leading receiver, says, hey, we can go to the air, too. 35-7 is your score. got something to be fired up about, as they said earlier. It's 35-7. Mike Dimko's fifth touchdown pass of the year. R.B. Smith's third touchdown grab of the year. And West Virginia's kickoff out of bounds at about the eight or nine yard line. So the Mountaineer fans, something to get up and yell about here, Lynn. Let's go down to Al Troutwick. 
Corey, I'm with the governor of the state of West Virginia, Mr. Arch A. Moore. It's been a little bit of a long afternoon, hasn't it? It's been a long afternoon, but this is a great football team. It really is, and I'll tell you something else. We're on the 45-yard line. This is today's best seat in the house for the simple reason we can watch a great football game and lobby for lower taxes at the same time. How about it, Governor? You can't beat that. We're proud to have ABC with us. We think this is a, a great translation of what we know is a good part of the quality of life in West Virginia. What about the lower taxes, though? Well, things are coming along real well in that regard. We haven't touched the tax base, and we think that we're going to constructively go in that direction. Okay, only kidding, of course, here. This is not only the best seat in the house, Corey. It's the best seat in West Virginia for that purpose. <laughs> took Al seriously there, didn't he? <laughs> a little, a little, little promo for good living in West Virginia. Come on, folks, move on down. <laughs> Let's see what it really looks like from Al in the governor's position. There it is. That's what they're seeing right now. In the kickoff, it's a line drive kick. That is McAllister. Cleveland Gary, rather. Good out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Cleveland Gary. Oklahoma way out in front of the Longhorns. 24 nothing there. Last year, Oklahoma plays Miami. Oklahoma loses. Miami goes on. Uh, they're, they're playing extremely well. Uh, you know, Oklahoma was ranked number one. They faltered, got to the Orange Bowl where Penn State was ranked number one. Number one and two played, they won it. Okay, everyone is waiting for Miami just to slip up a little bit to put them closer to that number one spot. And Oklahoma, like all the other teams, even with a loss, is still going to play their best football and hopes that Miami slips up so they can come back to the top. All sides, receiving team, three kicks. Off sides, you heard. Mike Dover. Try it again. The officials for the day, with all the gang tackling that we've seen in this game, and we've seen a good amount of the crowd around the ball. It's a tough job for those officials to look in there and see if that knee hits the ground, to see if the ball is is, is in the possession of that receiver if the, or if the uh, field causes the fumble. Uh, but it's going it's to be a tough day. They're just going to have to hang in there. Here we go again. Charlie Bauman. It is <laughs> dropped by Cleveland Gary this time. Pops out of bounds and another line drive kick. He'd never make it in center field, would he, Lynn? <laughs> well, he's got to be careful. You can't let down when you're playing this game just because you've got the lead. It's Monday night. The Steelers and the Bengals. Lynn Swan, will you be there? I'll be there with Frank Gifford, who will be doing play-by-play. -play. All right. Sitting up there. No, this, this will be the first Monday night football game, first National Football League game I've ever broadcast. Looking we'll forward to it. With it. You know the Steelers ball club pretty well by now. They're going to fight pretty hard to stay in the AFC Central race. So Miami's in a hole here at their own five-yard line after Cleveland Gary can't handle it on the kickoff. And Warren Williams is smothered at the line of scrimmage if that. Stacy Smith comes up along with Robert Pickett, and they are fired up. Kind of go, go back to Al Proutwick and the Mountaineer. They shot the gun off. Well, he said he was going to fire the gun to get the team fired up. Yeah, I, you know, I think they've been playing better. They got the touchdown. Defense looks good here in the first play. Keep an eye on that Mountaineer. He might shoot a few more. 35-7. <laughs> 7 to go for the half. Testaverde. Touch pass. Alonzo Highsmith pulls it in. Scampers out of bounds. Alabama. What a team they have this year. A few of the other top 20s teams for you. Third and two. So it'll be third and two now for Miami. They've been successful on two of their five third down situations. Third and two. Here we go. Miami is capable of throwing the pass on the will play also. Single setback, Williams, and he's got the first down. So they can't come through. 
Curtis and Warren in there on the tackle. Williams almost had his helmet taken off there. Someone was holding him. Most of his body was squeezing forward, pushing forward. Somebody else grabbed him by the legs. Kind of situation you hate to be in, except when something gives and yeah. all too often it's a part of your body. Highsmith and Warren in the backfield. The give is to Alonzo. Tries to turn it up. Stacy Smith is there at about the 24-yard line. Stacy Smith, cornerback out of Akron, Ohio. We talked to Stacy last night. He said he was ready for the Hurricanes. <laughs> Ready to take them on, stop them. They could really do themselves a service here if they were able to stop them deep in their own territory, give their offensive unit a head start, build position. Well, you know, this defense got a real lift last week when they allowed only 13 points in that loss to Virginia Tech after surrendering 72 the two previous Saturdays. On second and three, Heismith. Bangs for a couple. Brad Hunt is there to make the stop. See the clock ticking down. To about six minutes to go here in the first half. Looks like they stopped him just short of that first down. The defensive unit for West Virginia has not been playing that badly. Has not been playing that poorly. They've been up against a strong Miami two football team which had, that's had great field position throughout this ball game. They came out of here like a shot in the first quarter. Uh, Smith came in, putting pressure on Testaverde, throwing him for a loss. Uh, Grant came up with some big plays. Very, very solid. You see them taking the measurement there. If they turn in a good performance here in the series again, they might give the offensive unit better field position. Who knows what can happen. They're about a foot short, and don't forget at halftime, Jim Lampley will be with us, along with an interview with former Maryland Athletic Director Dick Doe. We've got highlights, of course, and Al will make a special visit to the Testaverdes on Long Island. I'm looking forward to that. I am, too. Now, Vinny's a big uh, Mets fan, incidentally. Happy, I'm sure, with Mr. Dykstra's heroics today at Shea Stadium. Third down and inches. About 10 inches, I would say. Highsmith, yes, the first down. Brad Hunt buried his helmet in Highsmith, but not before the first down was negotiated. It's 35-7. Five minutes and 48 seconds to go here at the half, for the half. Near field in beautiful Morgantown, West Virginia. This is a stunning, stunning part of the country, especially in the fall. You of the coach. Well, you know, before Neyland came here, West Virginia had never been to back-to-back -back bowls. They've been to four bowls in the last five years. But Neyland had the controls. That was Warren Williams. Trying the left side, gets a couple. Matt Smith, the All-American candidate, number 50, is over to make the stop. Matt Smith said he was going to be in that backfield, going to be coming after the quarterback. Blitzing quite a bit this afternoon. That ball was snapped. He wasted no time. Stocky player. Did a good job of pushing off some would-be blockers, keeping his hands free. Linebackers need to have that good technique. Second and six. You know, Smith early in the year said that West Virginia's offense was lackadaisical. Try to inspire his teammates a little bit. Warren Williams, big hit there. Brad Hunt. Now, I have to believe that... Uh, I said, I said this earlier, that they're just going to the ground game to make sure they don't get a lot of their people hurt, their receivers, they don't want them getting banged up. Just to control this game to a certain degree, keep the clock moving. You know, they've got a big lead, and I think they're just trying to protect themselves. Irvin, the receiver at the bottom of your picture, Perriman on top, back to the eye in third and three, Williams gets it, and the first down as well. 
I'll tell you one thing I don't think he's doing, but it's certainly going to help this young man. I don't think that Johnson, as a coach, is out there trying to have his players look good because they can get drafted higher, that kind of thing. He's out there for them to, to play well and turn in a good performance, to win a ball game that will lead them to a championship. But certainly in a ball game like this, giving his running backs a chance to run with the football does showcase the running ability on a passing football team. The Canes now with 16 first downs here in the first half from their own 44. Testaverde going to have to scramble. Gets it off to Highsmith. A nice grab by Highsmith. And look out. He's got two men to beat. And he bowls to about the 22. Alonzo Highsmith, first of all, makes a nice grab going down low to make the catch. Looks upfield. And a nice run. We talked about the quarterback, the footwork, having the foot speed, just being able to scramble. Testaverde gets the ball off. Nice pass. But watch the block by Alfredo Roberts, the tight end. He's down there blocking people deep downfield. Excuse me, that was Mike Irvin. Downfield, blocking, getting the help he needs so he can run down. Now look at this footwork. Perfect position to throw the ball. He scrambles, going backwards. That time, because he was on the run, he didn't have that perfect balance to throw the football, but he planted that back foot for a moment to give him a base to throw the football, a soft low pass to Highsmith. 33 yards, Alonzo. Walking off the field somewhat gingerly. He is a great professional prospect. There's no question about that. Yesterday, when I saw him in person for the first time, he reminded me a lot of Herschel Walker. Just the way he looks, the body, even the face. Oliver replacing Highsmith in the backfield, number 37. First and 10, number 22. That's Williams. Williams gets inside the 20-yard line. Darren Whitten gets credit for the stop. 35-7. 315 to go here in the first half. Johnson's got problems. Jim Johnson, head coach, has got problems not with the talent in the football team in terms of execution, but just this afternoon with his players getting banged up. Now they came in banged up, as we mentioned, especially the defensive secondary. The offense players are falling out like Matt Smith trying to chase Testaverde. Look at all the time. Testaverde poised, and he's going to run. The 15, the 10, the 5, and finally gets out of bounds. And what impresses me there is that Vinny Testaverde could have taken the out of bounds at about the 10, but said, hey, I got five more yards. I'll take a chance. Went for it, took a step out. 14 yard gain. From now on, whoever covers this young man is going to be redundant because we keep saying all the wonderful things about his poise, his, his head, how smart he is, his eyes looking downfield, seeing what's around him. He was looking at blocks downfield, seeing people there in position to make a block. Sure, he could have stepped out of bounds, but he saw a player making the effort on his behalf. He takes a ball further downfield. Once he goes as far as he can, he's still on the sideline, then he steps out. Very sensitive, as, as we know, to, to being elevated above his teammates. Wants to be one of the guys. Nothing special. Testaverde going to loft it up. He's got Williams. Touchdown. There's a flag on the play. We'll have to see what it is. It may bring it back. As Williams is slow to get up. That's right. It will come back. Penalty on Miami, and again, Williams, you're right. Slow to get up in the end zone. Had to make a diving grab on the toss from Testaverde. He's shaken up a little bit. Doesn't appear to be anything serious. Made a good diving grab of the catch. Miami accustomed to playing in the Orange Bowl, which is a natural surface, all grass. Here it's AstroTurf, and it's a hard surface. Go up in the air, you come down, you get hit. You take, you get hit and you go to the ground, you take two hits. One from the opposing player, one from the surface. Illegal motion, offense, still first down. Number 47 is Let's Mike see. Irvin, the receiver. He looks like he just may have started a bit early. A rolling start for a sprinter. You'd call that just anticipation, wouldn't you, Lynn? Yeah, that <laughs> anticipation. <laughs> first and goal from the 11 now. High Smith. I think he's going to get in, and he does. Alonzo.
Enzo Heisman from 11 yards out takes it in for the touchdown. And that is Heisman's first rush, rushing touchdown this year. Strange as it seems, it is. And again, Miami on the board from 11 yards out. This football team is solid. Every player is getting help from other players on the football field at the same time. Number 33, wide receiver Brett Kerman is on the outside, blocking downfield, giving him the necessary time. Those are tough blocks for receivers to make because that defensive back can slip off at any moment. The back see it, they make the play. A culmination of a superb 95-yard drive. Extra point from Cox is good. 95 yards oh, down the field. I got two more coming. Heisman says he's got two more coming. <laughs> Ian Warren Williams celebrating on the bench. Yeah, David Lockwood, number 41, is the last man who has a chance on Highsmith. The man who's got all who's got an old world name. I love it. It Alonzo is. Alonzo Highsmith. It's fun we'll, to say. We'll be back. <laughs> So Highsmith with the 11-yard touchdown run makes it 42 to 7 for Alonzo, his 21st touchdown of his career. Only Otis Anderson and Eddie Dunn have more. Roman Nelson and fumbles the football as he's knocked out of bounds. That's Mariska to help push him away. Let's check in now with Al Trotwig. Al. Corey, you may be able to see the hospital here at the West Virginia University campus just off to the left side of the stadium from time to time. The x-ray room right there is a busy place right now. Brian Blades, sprained ankle, he's being x-rayed. Melvin Bratton, number five, the running back, he's being x-rayed for a sprained ankle. And John O'Neill, number 75, he has a sprained knee. He is also there for x-rays. Winston Moss, number 92, has a cut chin. He'll be sutured at halftime. That's Craig Taylor, first carry of the game, up to about the 45-yard line. A few updated scores for you. The Sooners continue to roll. The Red Acres having problems down there in Texas. Big problems. Michigan leads. That's that medical center that Al referred to a moment ago. Alabama. Well, I tell you what, I think Alabama Auburn's going to be a big football oh. game. Outstanding. Timko firing intended for Taylor. Overthrows his man. Got a minute and 43 to go here in the first half. Speaking of the medical center, Timko is a pre-med student. Got a 3.7 GPA. We know he's, he's no dummy out there. In fact, I understand, I understand he actually worked construction on that very building <laughs> this past summer. Third and one for West Virginia. Might be required to get in the next game. <laughs> Somehow I don't see the connection. Hand off, and I think they have the first down. That was Andre Johnson. First down, West Virginia. It is. Virginia. Coach Nealon he says, hey, Miami just flat has it all. This team, and he is right. His team has enough. That's Vinny Testaverde who leads it. Leads that Miami team. But it's West Virginia has, has the ability to get on the scoreboard. Tim Cow, the sack number 54. Bill Hawkins. They showed it with a good drive to get their only points of the ball game, the seven points they have now. In the hurry up offense. Under a minute to go. Second, 15. Timko, sharp pass. That is Johnson, but he cannot escape the grasp, grasp of Randy Shannon. He just gets back to what was the original line of scrimmage. 42 seconds. Under 40 seconds now. Timko wants a bullet, and it's intercepted there. That is Blades. His sixth interception of the year. And watch out when Blades gets the football, because this kid is unbelievable. Ran, a, ran for uh, a 400-yard four, sprint in high school, ran 46 seconds. Uh, that's moving pretty good. Of course, we said he was uh, invited to the Olympic trials. 
couldn't make it because of his schedule with the, with the football team here. He goes back. The secondary for Miami was doing nothing special. They had two people dropping back deep, uh, four, four, four or five people covering underneath. He just read the quarterback, moved into a position, that ball thrown high. He was the best. He was in the best position to make the catch. Six interceptions on the year. He had four last year, ran two of them back for touchdown. <laughs> That's the third West Virginia University turnover of the first half. They call, by the way, the secondary for Miami as the clock ticks down. Benny and the Jets. <laughs> An old Elton John song, and oh my. Unfortunately, we got another player down on the football field. Is that Henry, the tight end? That's Henry. Charles Henry, the big tight end from St. Petersburg, Florida. Clock stopped, eight seconds in yep. the first half. In fact, we, haven't, we haven't seen the ball uh, travel in Henry's direction much today. And again, the injury problems mount here for the University of Miami. Charles Henry, Charles Henry is a starting tight end. We haven't seen a lot of him. Right now he's down in the field. Eight seconds to go in the first half. And yet another hurricane off to the locker room. This time starting tight end Charles Henry. And what earlier was a concern is now a very big worry for Jimmy Johnson. The first half is over. Miami leads it 42-7. That's it for right now from Mountaineer Field. Right now at halftime, Miami leading West Virginia by a score of 42 to 7. This is Al Troutwick back in Morgantown. I grew up in Long Island, New York, not too far from where a young kid played football a few years after I did at a place called Rath Park much more successfully than I did. This past week on Wednesday, I went back to my old stomping grounds for a visit with the Testaverdes. Now, I have some of the slides that I took that day, and with this high-tech clicker, I'll be able to show you what it went like. Our first step, of course, was Elmont, New York, which, unbeknownst to me, was the gateway to Nassau County. And along Hempstead Turnpike, the road that runs there, you're able to see Belmont Park, the famous racetrack. And the high school nearby where Vinny went to school, Sawanika. He was an Indian. Now, after school, Vinny probably often went to Lenny's Ice Cream, as I did. I had a strawberry shortcake. Or if he wanted something more substantial, perhaps the Stop 20 Diner on Hempstead Turnpike. Now, this was the Palm Beach service station. I'm sure Vinny has bought gas there, and even then he knew that he had Florida in his future, the Palm Beach service station. And when I got finally on Vinny's block, there were kids playing football. This was Joey and Billy beating Bobby and Johnny five to nothing. Rainbow! Now, finally, I got to the Testaverde house in a really beautiful neighborhood in Elmont, and I was able to see game balls and trophies that Vinny has won. As well as, whoops, <laughs> that's from another vacation, sorry. As well as some other pictures that they showed me. Here's Vinny. He has teeth now. And some other shots. That's him playing in the Franklin Square Football League. And then there was this shot from Sawanica High School. That with a memorable 37-0 win over Mepham High. And here's that team shot. Maybe you can pick out the bubble chewing gum there, kid, in the second row. And finally, I got a chance to shake hands with Al and Josie Testaverde and get a game ball to touch it. And Lisa, uh, Le, Vinny's sister, was able to say goodbye from the front door. Let me say that the Testaverdes were an absolute pleasure. Vinny is uh, very, very lucky to come from a great family. And I'll be chatting with the Testaverdes in just a short while by telephone, if it's not busy. Back to you, Corey. <laughs> All right, Al. Vinny's ice cream. Right there in Elmont. Vinny, not a bad first half. 12 of 18, two touchdowns as West Virginia will kick it off to Miami. It's 42-7. Hurricanes lead it. Cleveland Gary. Fighting his way up to about the 18-yard line. Cleveland Gary, who transferred to Miami from the University of Georgia. I hate to even look at the stats from the first half, but here we go. Well, as you can see, it's all Miami. They have controlled the ball with their offense. They have st struck for the big plays. Their defense has forced turnovers, and they capitalized on all, all of them. In West Virginia's defense, I think that most of the turnovers and mistakes came as a result of them be maybe being too high for this football game. Testaverde still at quarterback. Kai Smith and Warren Williams, a man with the football, across the 20 to the 22-yard line, taken down by Eric Lester. Individually, take a look here. There's Testaverde's stats, as we mentioned. 12 of 18, a couple of touchdowns, rushing. Williams is the leader for West Virginia. Hollowfield, the only man above 20 yards. Myra Stubbs-Brown lead the way for Miami. 
Brown, of course, with two sacks, both early. And Curtis and Warren, the leaders for the Mountaineers. Second and seven. First series of the third quarter. Highsmith up close to the 30. And that's one, are you surprised the Highsmiths and the Warren Williams and the Vinny Testaverdes are still playing? I'm very surprised. When we started this ball game, it was a defense. They had three starters plus their second team strong safety that were not playing due to injuries. Most of them suffered in the Oklahoma football game. Now on offense in the first half, we've had four starters. Brian Blades, receiver, Charles Henry, tight end, Melvin Bratton, halfback, John O'Neill, offensive line, all out of the ball game on injuries, and yet he's still got Testa Verde and the rest of the starters in this ball game. Vinny escapes one would-be tackler. This time he's not going to get away. He goes down in a big heap. Number 95, Pat Marlin from Princeton, New Jersey. The man to get the sack on Vinny. That's the second sack of the day by the Mountaineers from West Virginia. Highsmith, fourth leading rusher for Miami after that last run. I don't think anybody's going to catch Otis Anderson in that list. <laughs> wow. Not this year. Otis, you might have noticed, traded this week from St. Louis to the Giants, as a matter of fact. Warren Williams, 25-yard line up to the 32, where Travis Curtis brings him down. Full house here at Mountaineer Field today, 63,500. Beautiful stadium. Not a bad seat in the house. We must say, though, several of... At 63,500 total are already gone. Want to get the jump down 79, which is under repair. <laughs> we'll head start. 36. Pescaverde steps up through the pocket. 40, 45, takes a dive at about midfield. There he is taken down. Brockman, 18-yard pickup, Vinny Testaverde. You pick up 18 yards in a play like this, why? You have to respect his arm. He's looking for someone deep. He has maybe about three seconds since he takes a snap and drops back, and that defense is already spread out so that he can just sprint straight down the field and pick up 18 yards and then go down to the turf before being hit. First down, Miami at midfield. Smith. Hurdles <laughs> through Stacy Smith up to about the 40. That's one of the things Don, one of the things Don Nealon had to say this week about Miami. He said, hey, all these running backs, he said, they hurdle right through you. They keep going. They move. They're unbelievable. He said it's unheard of to do the things that they do consistently. It's second and one, a nine-yard pickup for Highsmith, who now has 53 yards on the day and a touchdown. Ball on the 43-yard line. Testaverde to go upstairs. He's got his man, Perriman, tries to put a move on. It works. Up to about the 15, 14-yard line. And Swan looks like you out there for a moment. Might even be better than me on that particular <laughs> move. He looked pinned on the sideline. Didn't have much room. And he made a pirouette. A little ballet move there. Number four, Stacy Smith is the man he did the pirouette on right there <laughs> before he goes down and steps out of bounds on the play. 24-yard gain, and Perriman gets about six or seven on his own here. He's been splitting time, as I said earlier, with Brian Blade, so with Blade's out, uh, it's nothing new to him to be in there. He'll do a good job. First down from the 18, Testaverde rolling. He's got some pressure. Good block there from Williams on Grant. Touchdown, Miami. Brett Perriman, and I'm telling you what, that is the perfect example of everything Vinny Testaverde can do. And Perriman looks like he hit the wall hard after crashing through the end zone after the catch. Oh, I hope he's all right. There is a border around this football field, a, a softer substance, almost as if it were a running track. And when he makes the catch, he continues out of bounds, and he hits that, and he slips as he can't stop himself right there. And then he doesn't slide into the wall, so I just think it's just a matter of his leg coming down on that surface. 
But we got to see Vinny Testaverde avoid the rush, take a look out there on the run, spot his receiver, and fire it. Vinny now with his third touchdown pass of the day. He's got 190 yards in the air, 14 of 20 for the day. And they have been perfect on the extra points. Seven touchdowns in this ball game, 49. Is he talking to mom and dad here, Lynn? Uh, well, he, he might as well talk to mom <laughs> and dad. <laughs> he can talk to the coaches upstairs, uh, but whether are they going to tell him anything, but he's playing a great ball, a great, a great uh, game. As we see Perriman almost tripping, still scrambling around to make the catch for the touchdown. 10.58 to go. Miami, the game well in hand. Today, here is the fact of the day. As Indiana tried to beat Ohio State at home for the first time since 1904, their number one place kicker, Pete Stojanovic, was at home, missing the game because of the death of his mother. His backup kicker, who need not be humiliated by name here, missed from 35 and 39 yards, two field goal attempts, either one of which could have amounted to the winning margin in the game. Don't let those nabobs at USA Today tell you Monday it was anything else. That was the fact of the day. Meanwhile, while UCLA is coming back against Arizona, it is 18-16 Wildcats in the fourth quarter back to Morgantown. All right, the kickoff. That's Roman Nelson. He fumbled the football, and Miami has it. Yes, with the Hurricanes, number 41, Eric Ham, their outstanding kickoff specialist, comes down and grabs that football as Roman Nelson couldn't make the catch on the bounce. Roman Nelson has got to come up, play that ball in the air. He lets this one just bounce right in front of him, and on the bounce, it just bounce straight, straight up through his arm. No, no way in the world he is supposed to do that. That is an uncalled for error in judgment and a mistake on his part. He's just got to come in and handle it. Vinny Testaverde taking a seat on the bench. Jeff Torita is in, and he's in great field position. A pitch back. Number 21, that is J.C. Penny. Down to about the 13th, first carry of the day for J.C. Penny. So Vinny Testaverde will accept congratulations on the sideline and take over as a spectator at this point. 49 to 7, he's done, a, I think, plenty of work today. Take a look at it again. There's Nelson, bounces up, hits him in the chest, and he has no shot at it. See him hesitate right there? He can't do that. Something like that happens, he can't think about picking it up and running. He should just dive on the football. Penny, inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. J.C. I wonder where he buys his clothes. Sears. <laughs> Torita, who has seen some action this year. 113 yards through the air. He's made 8 of 19 throws he's attempted. One interception, no touchdowns. It's a transfer from a Diablo Valley Community College out in California. He had enrolled at Cal Berkeley way back in 82. He's a senior, and J.C. Penny is in hard. Very, very hard by Brad Hunt. Nice hit. Now let's check in with Al Trotwig. Al? Corey, people that live on the coastlines of America know what these flags mean. It means hurricane warning. But there's a little bit of a story here concerning the mascot of Miami. You see, when those flags fly and everybody evacuates, the last bird, evidently, that leaves Miami in the event of a hurricane is the ibis. That's why this bird is here. It either means you're fast or stupid, don't you think? Thank you. Can I have that back, Corey? <laughs> Funny bird. Great sense of humor. Al has been avoiding trouble all day, barely. Getting roughed up over there. Greg Cox. The field goal attempt, and it's good. So Cox converts on the field goal from 20, 30 yards out, his first of the year. We got ourselves a 52-7 ball game. On eighth-ranked Arkansas Trails, Texas Tech at home, 17. Seven touchdowns by two great Southwest Conference names, Bouvier Dale and Billy Joe Tolliver. Meanwhile, in Pullman, where no Pac-10 team likes to try to travel, Washington State leads unbeaten Southern Cal, 17-0 at halftime. Back to Morgantown. Lynn Swan, can you believe that score? Well, I said this Saturday I thought was going to be upset weekend. I wasn't <laughs> hoping or thinking that it would be my alma mater being upset by Washington State. <laughs> He's not upset about anything. <laughs> Greg it's a Cox. It's a loose football team in Miami. Well, he and Mark Selig have been battling for the place-kicking position this year. Cox had 
controlled that job for two years. That was his first kick of the year. That is Benny Curran. Nice run up to about the 30-yard line. Mark Seeley, kicker for Miami on the kickoffs, was the man to push him out of bounds. Lynn Swan, sure, Corey. when it's 52-7, <laughs> yeah. with eight minutes and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter, pride. Right, <laughs> that's what you play for. Now, I'm sure in the, at halftime, coach told his guys, listen, you're up against it. I'm sure he didn't waste his time yelling and screaming at them and trying to admonish whatever mistake the mistakes they made. Just told them to go after it, play for some pride, improve on themselves, work on their game, and that they could score. John Hollifield up to the 43-yard line, gain of about six, maybe seven. Attitude being such an important part of any football team. When you're down like this, you have to reach down and find whatever's inside yourself that makes you a competitor and play with that pride and that desire to improve and just stay with it. Hollifield tries to turn it up, can't do it. Celio is there to make the stop for Miami, a two-yard loss. Don't forget tonight, baseball continues. The American League Championship Series, the Red Sox and the Angels, game four. Of course, the Angels last night, that wild one out in Anaheim, beat Boston, and they lead it now two games to one tomorrow. It'll be game five, Red Sox and Angels. And of course, the Houston Astros and the Mets from Shea Stadium. We didn't hear today. The Mets came back in the ninth inning to win. Game three over Houston. The big dive, John Hollifield for the first down yardage. Yep. John Hollifield is on the student board of government here at WVU. That group sits down and tries to make policy for the student body there. As you look at West Virginia's first half possession, their own 19 and 20. Minus 17 yards, and then they punt it in the second position. Fumbled the kickoff, mistakes. You see, West Virginia in the second half started off the way they started the first half, fumbling the football. First down, West Virginia. Tim go to the air. It's incomplete, intended for John Talley. And a good play by the linebacker, Winston Moss, number 99, who came up and deflected that ball. That was a, just about what into the hands of Talley. Look at the way that Talley runs back with that arm just dragging. Got a big pad there on the back of it. The ball thrown a bit behind him. Didn't get a chance to get up in the air, spin around and try and make the catch. Came down and think he just took his mind away from the game for a second and almost got decked. Even when you're behind, you can't expose yourself to those kind of shots. Second and 10. Kimco goes down. And Jerome Brown and Dan Stubbs combine at sack number five. If they credit Brown with the sack, that'll be his third of the day. I think obviously Brown is still in the ball game because the coach wants him to get himself back in the game shape. Uh, he missed the game last week on his foot. He'll let a player of his caliber play as long as he wants to go, even in a ball game like this. I just can't believe how quick he is for a guy that size. Really moves down there in the trenches. Third 21. Timko avoids the rush, but not for long. Stubbs brings him down at about the 40-yard line. George Myra also there. Jerome Brown had done a little number, a little game on the inside. Went upfield and came back on it. <laughs> Tim goes he looks exhausted, doesn't he? He is exhausted. He's, wow. he's frustrated more than anything else. And he's trying hard. He was able to engineer one good drive, which resulted in a touchdown to Smith. Uh, so he had some, some glimpse of being able to put together another drive. And now he comes out here. And they're at it again. It's fourth and long. And they've got to punt the football away. West Virginia came in with a two and three record. Looking to turn their season around, but it's not going to happen here today. That's number 33 for Miami Perriman. Takes a quick route to the sideline at about the 20 yard line. 
defensively with Blades going out, Perryman will be in there. They'll probably still have Michael Irving in there. Just been hurt, Dan, so with the receivers being hurt, they probably will keep their best two receivers in the ball game. By the way, that was a 57-yard punt for Carrion. We're in the third quarter from Morgantown, Miami and West Virginia. <laughs> I wonder if that guy made it up to the dorm room yet. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm surprised Al didn't go out. I Come thought on. he would have gone. A little more guts than that, huh? J.C. Penny streaks up across the 30 to 33-yard line. Miami with the football. We've got six minutes to go in the third quarter. The Canes are raising some here in Morgantown, 52-7. 14 yards on the carry there for J.C. Penny, who is an excellent kickoff returner. Last week, he had his career best, a 56-yarder against Northern Illinois. Same, small, he's built very low to the ground, but maybe has the strongest legs of all the running backs. He's the kind of guy could probably start for a lot of schools, too. Tarita, incomplete pass. That was intended for Eric Ham, reserve halfback. Don't forget next week, Alabama. What a club Bama has. They won again today. They're taking on Tennessee next week. You'll see that game. Or a Southwest Conference matchup, which should be a dandy as well. Baylor and Texas A&M. So Bama, Tennessee, or Baylor and Texas A&M. Yeah, and speaking of A&M, just got the final in. 19-7 over the Houston Cougars. Jackie Sherrill, who's the head coach at A&M, another one of those people like Jim Johnson spent some time at the University of Pittsburgh, was a head coach at the University of Pittsburgh for a while before moving down to A&M. Brad Hunt stopped Eric Hamm on that last play to set up a third and 12 for Miami. Again, Benny Testaverde sitting back and relaxing right now after three touchdown passes. Jeff Tarita is your quarterback, and he's on the run. Brought down at the 37-yard line by Lonnie Brockman, short of the first down. And I think Fiegels will attempt to punt for the second time today. The first time, he never got it off because he was rough. So stati statistically, this will statistically, be the first punt of the game. <laughs> this is his first putt of the game. Put, when you don't punt the football, it means you're you're beating somebody pretty bad or you're getting beat pretty bad. So Fiegels, if he remembers how to do it, here he is. And he does. Drifting back to receive. That's Harvey Smith at his own 10-yard line. He's got some speed. Brings it up across the 25 to 26-yard line. Harvey Smith, if you've been watching all afternoon, the man to make the touchdown reception for West Virginia in the first half. Their only points. 53-yard punt, a 16-yard return for Harvey Smith. But as you can tell, there is a flag on the play. Goes against West Virginia. More woes. Or problem. Sure. You know, one thing about West Virginia, too, that some of our audience might not realize is the past five or six years here with Don Nealon in control has really been as good a period of time in the history of West Virginia. Football. Been to four bowl games in the last five years. Illegal participation. Receiving team. First down. Illegal, Illegal participation. participation. <laughs> <laughs> It's a rather bizarre. Now, that is one I have not heard of before. The illegal, illegal participation. I'm going to look it up. Does that look it up? Does that mean someone along the sideline perhaps uh, stuck a it leg out? Like. Torita. The pass to 81 for Miami. Brian Smith, the reserve tight end. <laughs> Get simply 12 men on the field. Oh, with the that's what we're told. The indication first is. But first time I've ever heard it called illegal participation. Oh, well, it's kind of a sophisticated. Yeah. Okay. Form. 
Jeff. Eric Ham twisting his way for a couple yards. Now the reason why it's called illegal participation is because if the 12th man participates in a play, it's a 15-yard penalty. If he doesn't participate, it's only five. Apparently Good. he participated, he partook of action, and they partake of, and they take away yards. Good. <laughs> then we have that straightened out here. Three minutes and 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Hurricanes of Miami came in with that number one ranking. An undefeated mark through five games. And they'll stretch it out to six here today. Let's pause five seconds for our stations to identify themselves. Hand off to Eric Ham. Good for a couple yards. Eric Ham, mostly a special teams player. This is Corey McFerrin with Lynn Swan and Al Trotwig. Morgantown, West Virginia, the Miami Hurricanes. And the West Virginia Mountaineers, as you can see, the Canes with a big lead here. It's been all Miami all day long. Vinny Testaverde already taking a spot on the bench to watch his teammates in action. 188 yards through the air and three touchdown passes. As J.C. Penny is tackled for a loss by Darren Witt. Outside linebacker for West Virginia. Sophomore, 6'3", 226 pounds. <laughs> That's Vinny Testaverde as you look at his stats for the afternoon. He has not thrown an interception now in 72 plays, 72 passes. He has not <laughs> thrown an interception. That's consistency. That's being a heads-up football player, and that's having a lot of people open downfield. Torita will be smashed. The man to bring him down there, Mike Fox, reserve defensive tackle. Now, Vinny, go ahead, Lynn, on this play. Well, what we're having right now is see Mike Fox, number 61 on the left side. West Virginia is also getting some of their backup people in the game, and he does a fine job just fighting off the tackle, slipping him on the inside to make the sack. I just don't think that uh, Jeff was aware that he was under that kind of pressure. Snuck up on him. Didn't know it was coming. Third and 21. Jeff Torita is your quarterback. He's a senior out of California. Going for the end zone, and it is caught. David Kintide, touchdown, Miami. For Tarita, his first touchdown pass of the year. Miami is a passing football team. They're all, they live by the pass, so it's not unusual when you see their backup people come into the ball game and still put the ball in the air, even though the score is 58 to 7. Look at the drop that Jeff takes. He goes back what looks to be a good 15 yards. Many teams who have started going to the shotgun formation do it for just that reason to get back, get a long look downfield to read that secondary and throw the football. He just sprinted backwards 15 yards for that long look and found his receiver downfield. 45-yard hookup. Tarita to Kintai. Extra point blocked this time. So, the scoreboard will have to start at 58-7 to right now. The Hurricanes will have to be satisfied with that. Less than a minute to go in the third. October, you can whisper that the game in Pasadena might have Rose Bowl implications. And Arizona, leading 18-0, falling behind 24-18, has now come back on a halfback option touchdown pass by David Adams and leads UCLA 25-24 with three and a half minutes remaining in Pasadena. Remember, Arizona does not play Washington this year. They have the inside track to the Rose Bowl if they can win today. Now let's go back to Morgantown. Thank you, Jim Lampley. The West Virginia team has to be satisfied with small victories today, like that blocked punt by that man, number 61, Mike Fox. And watch him do it right here. And it looked as if Cox just really took a long time to come into the ball. He hesitated and just strolled up to that ball and tried to punch it over. Sealing lets it go at the 15-yard line. That is Darren Fulton. Out of bounds, and West Virginia will again take over on offense here with 49 seconds to go in the third quarter. They trail by 51 points. 
This young lady still seems to be enjoying herself despite the scoreboard. <laughs> and you see the disparity there in the stats, total yardage, five yards for the Mountaineers in the second half. Wow. Actually, the, the third quarter. So far in the so second far, half, right? seconds There's still a fourth left. quarter yeah. to go, but even for a one quarter, that isn't <laughs> <It's> exactly <laughs> anything to brag about. <laughs> We're trying to find the positives here. Ben Reed in the ball game for John Talley, and it's just broken up. A nice defensive play there by number 48, McDowell. <laughs> up, in the air, up in the air above Mountaineer Field, we've got a Pittsburgh Steeler fan who rented out a plane, wants to get Mr. Testaverde now, the blue and gold of Pittsburgh. That's that's just in case Chuck is at home watching this football game <laughs> thinking about drafting a quarterback sometime. Several people have walked up to me today you know, and said, Lynn, you know, will the Steelers lose all their games, put themselves in the position to draft Vinny <laughs> Testaverde? That's Ben Reed in the ball game. That graphic was inaccurate. Reed in the ball game for the first time, and he's taken down by uh, Jimmy Jones, who's a backup left in for Miami. Ben Reed, as we mentioned earlier in the ball game, came in today, or came in last week, in the Virginia Tech game in the second quarter in place of Mike Timko, and he served throughout most of the ball game. See the clock ticking down there, 10 seconds. Virginia will probably still try and get this playoff. I don't know if they're going to make it here. Just in time, Reed. Hand off, that is Johnson, and look at him go. Big gainer up across the 30, where he's brought down, and that's it for three quarters of play. Under Johnson, a nice game. He's a West Virginia fan. An earthquake temporarily halts a civil war. Details after the game. Looks at a 58 to 7 deficit. Good throw down to Al Troutwig. Al? We'll go back to Al in just a moment after this punt. Brett Perriman goes down. Now let's check in with Al. Al? Corey, I'm on the phone live with uh, Mrs. Testaverde. Josie, can you hear me? Your son has played quite a game today, hasn't he? We are so uh, impressed with his poise and with his behavior on the field. Tell me, if you would, the worst thing he did when he was a kid. Uh, the worst thing he did was uh, put bubbles in. And my husband, told, my husband pulled up in the station to put the uh, in his car, and his uh, attendant told him, or uh, somebody by the name of Testaverde put all suds uh, in my fountain. You know, we got a kick out of it because my husband didn't tell him that that was his son. But my son had a jacket on saying that his name is Mr. Dirty. So he put bubble bath in the fountain at the gas station and got caught. Is your husband there? Yes. Hello, uh, Al, can you tell me, would you, uh, would you say you had a, a, a huge effect in, in Vinny's career in terms of what he learned skills in football or more about the emotions that he's gained in, in playing on the field? Uh, not, a, not, not, not too much. Uh, the talent was always there. I think he was born with it. He's, he's really a super kid and a great athlete. Now, you've seen Vinny play so many games, both in person. You've seen so many great moments. You've uh, agonized with him a little bit when he had a weight on the bench. How do your feelings change as you watch Vinny now in this very important time in his career, uh, even on a day like this when his team is running away with things? Uh, it's very emotional, very exciting, and we're very happy, and we're proud of him. As Mike. Oh, it was, it, was a, it was a big day in Queens, New York with the Mets, wasn't it? Yeah, we're having a thrill today. It was a great game. It was an exciting game, and uh, we're very happy for the Mets. I'd like to thank you both very much for letting me visit with you on Wednesday and certainly uh, with us letting to uh, come into your home via the telephone today. Thank you very much. Corey, first down. Okay, Al. Thanks for that report, that update on the Testaverde family back in Elmont, New York. Now watch this play again. You saw it a moment ago. This is Jeff Tarita to David Kintai. You mentioned that the first touchdown pass for Jeff last year was a uh, touchdown pass to Kintai just as it was today. And it's because when he comes in the ballgame, usually they come in at the same time. J.C. Penny 
showing a little bit of his stuff. He's got plenty of it. The Hurricanes are deep at every position. That's right. David Kintai is one of only two players on the Miami football team is married. He got married this summer. His wife, is name, her name is Nancy. And the only other married player on the team, at least listed, was their Paul O'Connor, number 77, their right offensive guard. He's married to Karen, and they have a little son, a daughter named Shauna. Cam, a couple of yard gain there. Miami, I think, again, is just going to be content to move the football along on the ground. 12.45 on the clock, fourth period. Jeff looking to get some experience, sharpen his skills into the game situation. Inside the 25-yard line, here is Penny. He gets through a couple tacklers and continues to push his way up to the 23-yard line where Preston Waters makes the stop. A few of the scores in Oklahoma and Texas. The Sooners in control there. Michigan breezing. Big 10 score, Indiana. Looking for the upset today. Didn't get it. UCLA playing well. Hit. Pitt over Notre Dame. Big ball game for Pitt. Alabama, a team that uh, many of you will see next week against Tennessee right here on ABC Saturday afternoon. Third and six from the 21. Marita moves out, throwing long, and it is... Is it caught or intercepted? Picked off. Picked off. West Virginia's number 35, Preston Waters. Interesting story there. Preston Waters, who was forced into action against Pittsburgh a few weeks ago, had three touchdown passes thrown over his head. West Virginia had a bad problem. They had their first two safeties both knocked out. He had to come in. He had never played before. And I'm sure a play like this certainly would help his confidence. It certainly does. Jeff Torita trying to put the ball in the end zone, showing his skills, just throws it in front of the receiver. Preston Waters is able to pick it off. So a good play here late in the ball game in the fourth period. <laughs> There's a wild game in Pasadena on a UCLA drive which began with intentional grounding, second and 19 at UCLA's four. The drive ended in a 32-yard Gaston Green touchdown run and a two-point conversion, and the Bruins have come back again, now with only 15 seconds left, lead Arizona 32-25. Back to Morgantown. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson both looking out and both at this point in the game probably looking to see some of the same things. They have new players in there for Jimmy Johnson. He obviously has his second and third stringers in because of the big lead and the same reason for Don Nealon. Trying to see what these guys are made of, what kind of plays they can make. And I'm sure Don Nealon just saw Preston Waters and was very happy with the interception, which now gives the ball to Ben Reed in the offense at the 20-yard line where Andre Johnson just made a gain of four. Look at that Washington State USC score, Lynn. Come on. It must be in Washington, a driving rainstorm. It's cold. I don't understand it. <laughs> we, we're tired of excuses, okay? Uh, no, but truthfully, a, a, a sensational year to this point for Southern Cal. Georgia Tech with a big win today. There's Johnson again getting knocked around a little bit. Brings the ball up to about the 29-yard line. Ben Reed, who is in the ball game now at quarterback for West Virginia, has the longest touchdown pass of the year for the Mountaineers. Hit Darren Fulton against Northern Illinois earlier this year. In fact, Northern Illinois, the only team that both these schools have played so far this year. Both West Virginia and Miami handled the Huskies with ease. 58 to 7 to score in case you've just joined us. This is Ben Reed for West Virginia. That ball intended for Johnson, knocked down by number 91, Rod Carter. Good defensive play by Carter. Rod Carter back here out of Fort Lauderdale. Just looks like he leaped over his shoulder, got a hand in there and tried to knock it down. It's a special game for a lot of kids out here who play together down in South Florida. For instance, the uh, linebacker for West Virginia, Robert Pickett, played football on the same team as Mel Broughton, who left the game in the first half with the injury. And several of these players know each other pretty well. There are 13 players on the West Virginia team who hail from the state of Florida. Kintai, the run back. Across midfield, he's got a lot of room. He's got one man back there to beat. He's still going, and he may go all the way, and he does. 
David Kintai. Wow, 61 yards on the punt return. Kintai with the 45-yard touchdown reception a few moments ago. Now the 61-yard punt return for touchdown. And when a guy like that comes into a ball game as your third or fourth stringer and does what he's done, it shows you what kind of talent and depth Miami has. He does a good job just looking at the ball. Look at the wall of blockers he gets right here. They're going to bring it back. I think there's a flag down at about the 30-yard line. But look at him tight rope the sideline there. Good balance, good poise. He's looking straight ahead. Not thinking about anything except not to step, take a step to his right, but there's a flag and they're bringing the ball back. Well, not as if the Canes need the points, but I'm sure David is disappointed. Get the call here from the official. Out of clip. Receiving team, here in the run back. First down. Let me tell you. When you return the punt for a <laughs> touchdown, and they call it back, there there's the clip right there. Just hit him in the back. You take away an opportunity that may never come back again. We'll be right back, 10:26 in the fourth quarter of action. Victories, a hurricane record. We should stress those 15 victories, which is about to turn into 16 victories over the regular season. Getting a nice cheer for us here from West Virginia. Cheerleaders. Miami has a new quarterback in the ball game. His name is Steve Walsh, as he hands it off to Eric Hamm. He bounces off a couple tacklers before Larry Holly. Finally brings him down. Walsh, a six foot three inch red shirt freshman out of St. Paul, Minnesota, took his first snap from center of his collegiate career last week against Northern Illinois with about three minutes to go in that ball game. Had a sensational high school career back in St. Paul, throwing for something like 4,700 yards. Well, so people think that he might be the next star that quarterback position for the Hurricanes. <laughs> Number 44 for Miami, that is Steve Stapier. Well, take a look at that phenomenal first quarter that Miami had coming because of the turnovers by the West Virginia football team, 28 points. They don't stop, they're consistent, they just keep coming after you and after you. Even David uh, Kentai had his punt return for a touchdown call back, but <laughs> they will just keep on putting them on the scoreboard. Now Miami's yet to uh, allow a score in the first quarter, and West Virginia is yet to score a touchdown in the first quarter through six games. Walsh, the quick pass to Percy Wilson, wide receiver. Now you talk about that long line of quarterbacks and, uh, Obviously, before Vince or Vinny Testaverde, you had Bernie Kozar. Before Kozar, you had Jim Kelly. Just an amazing string. And, of course, back in the 60s, you had George Myra. Very Don James played here. Very talented. The offensive coordinator for the University of Miami is Gary Stevens. He was the quarterback coach for this team when Kelly was here. And when Howard left and... When John came in, he retained him on the staff, and he made him the offensive coordinator. See the penalty on Miami? Let's now check in with Al. What's going on, Al? Uh, Corey, you know, frequently we do the best seat in the house. How are these for the worst seats in the house? But nothing like television to draw a crowd. This is a pretty solemn bunch here. You know, West Virginia's getting killed today. But the good Ball news time. is that the game is going to be over in 8 minutes and 37 seconds. watching Al as he moved up there. There was no one there. Al moved up there. They saw the ABC Blue Jacket, and they flocked all around him. The power of television. And the second and ten. <laughs> they, Altercation still along the line, and they're still, I think they're going to throw Al off. They're still cheering. The they <laughs> Not cheering. Up there. Al, you may have generated new enthusiasm. Well, you know, West Virginia is known for its rowdy fans across the country. These folks take their football seriously here, and they, they love their Mountaineer football. Support this program wholeheartedly. Walsh, the handoff to Ham. 
spins out of one tackler's grasp before he's brought down after a two-yard game by Jeff Lucas. He had a few tempers flaring, looks like. Another yellow handkerchief on the field. More flags as the game gets a little sloppy here. Holding on Miami. Top ten scores. Most are finals at this point. The Texas Tech, the uh, Texas Tech victory over Arkansas. Springs out at you, number eight, Arkansas. Goes down to defeat today. That's an upset. Nebraska not playing this afternoon. They're going to play tonight. It's Oklahoma State. Holding. Offense. Second down. Cincinnati gave Penn State a big scare today, as you may know. Now, she's upset because they're losing this game. You can tell. <laughs> she's probably upset because it's getting a little cool out there, and her sweater isn't keeping her warm enough. <laughs> it's funny. Jimmy Johnson last night says, you know, it gets real cool down here on this field. We're going to have to go home. Our players don't like it, Cole. It's below 60, and it's it's rough for them. That pass intended for Percy Wilson, defended by Willie Edwards. Now, in defense, not that he needs any defending uh, for throwing the football late in the ball game.